off we go. Okay, so welcome to the Common Metrics meeting for July 11th, 2019. On the agenda today, we have the responsiveness metrics and geography. Although I think, um, I think Daniel was driving the responsiveness metrics and he's not here. I think he, Correct. He's, I think, not going to be able to attend. Um, so maybe we talk about geography first. Um, but before we dive into that, is there, are there any other things that we want to talk about in the meeting? Do we want to talk about some of the feedback that we've had so far on the metrics release? Yeah, has there been feedback on it? I had one other thing too. Uh, what was your other thing? Uh, the other thing was if common is going to be a working group that tries to identify metrics that are common across other working groups or potentially across other working groups, um, how can we start to create that connection? You know, is it in the, the filter definitions of the groups? So for example, like in evolution, they have, you know, new issues say, you know, and so mm -hmm. a particular could be geography, organizational affiliation. So, you want to is that our job to go add it to the filters? Is it our job to talk to the working groups? Is it look well, maybe the workflow? When you say, how do we add, adding it to the filters? What filters are you talking about specifically? Oh so, yeah, I'll, I'll put one up here in the chat. Okay. Um, one second. Somebody will volunteer to take notes. Kind of trying to lead it and take notes at the same time, which is just going to get faster for not doing one of one or the other. Um, I can do that. Okay, we can all help. Yes. Okay, so if I just. I'm putting in the chat, here's issues active. And if you scroll down in this, this metric, towards the bottom is filters and mm -hmm. visualizations. And so like a common filter for any one of these activity metrics is like time, right? That's a really common filter that you could filter based on like some time window. When you right. say how do they get added to the filters, right? So, because well, filters have been just specified inside of each metric, although time is often a, like probably in almost every one. Yep. Um, so when what is the when they say the how do they get added? The um, well, the, the role of common is to try to identify metrics that would be useful across potentially useful across all the other working groups, risk, value, evolution, and DNI. And so- Can I ask a question about that real quick? Sure. When you talk, when you say metrics that are useful across all of the working groups, uh, what, what level of abstraction are we talking about? Because these, the detail metrics as we're, as we present them are, are very low level. Uh, and these, uh, and most of the metrics that we've created are possibly usable by, by all of the working groups. Uh, so are, are you talking about the, the actual detail metric or are you talking about focus areas, focus areas that would be uh, common across all working groups? Oh let, me, let me back up just a little bit yeah. because I think, I think maybe I would frame the scope of this working group just a little bit differently in that it's less about looking across all the working groups and trying to find metrics that are common. And no. I think, what? Yeah, no, that's not what I was saying, if that's how okay. you were. No, 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 I, I wasn't sure. It was, okay. uh, but I, I do think that, that what we're responsible for are for ones that don't clearly fit into any of the other uh -huh. working groups that we're the place where we can define them. I see. So I think it's less about identifying them, which I think was, um, was how you framed it. Okay. More about 
more about defining the ones that are important to all of the working groups or, or some of the working groups. I mean, organizational affiliation is the example that we keep coming back to because yeah. Really, organizational affiliation, and you can see this in the filters that you posted too, um, by groups of actors, employer, which is basically organizational affiliation. Um, that's something that doesn't fit cleanly into any of the one working groups with something that we all, all of the working groups tend to care about. Right. And so maybe I'm overthinking it, but in the one that I sent you, whatever it was, issues active or something like that, um, in the filters by group of actors, right? As you pointed out. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, sh should in that filter, instead of saying like by group of actors, should it just point to the organizational affiliation metric from common saying, this is how you should think about a group of actors, or this is one potential way to think about a group of actors. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I'd... yeah, I don't know. I think that's, I think that's possibly overthinking it just a little bit because, okay. um, because that's going to come up a lot. Right. Although I do think that it would be nice if we used common language. So rather than employer used, um, organizational affiliation, mm -hmm. um, because you could be, I mean, you could be a volunteer at an organization and not necessarily be employed by the organization. You could yeah. be a contractor. There are some, I think, uh, legal distinctions with the word employer, employee. Um, I I kind of see where Matt's coming from because I think when I first joined this group, I, I that was sort of how I pictured us to be, like that we were overlapping with the other groups but now I'm kind of wondering if we like in my head I sort of flipped this model a little bit and I'm wondering if we should maybe take the approach that we are a centralized resource for a thing for like all groups that might like metrics that might overlap to every group like and, and sort of like not yeah, we're going to interact with the other working groups, but more as a centralized repository from which they can draw tools for their metrics. I'm not articulating that very well, mm -hmm. but we're sort of like, we, we the, the, instead of us trying to figure out how to work with them, basically we can just be a centralized resource for them to work with us. Mm -hmm. We're, we're kind of been, yeah, I agree with that. We've kind of been doing the metrics that everybody needs and nobody did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? They were kind the of weird the, ones that don't fit in any, like, specific hole. Sorry, Sean. I mean, yeah, 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 I was agreeing with you. Yeah. Is, is that contrary to what Don, I don't think that's contrary to what Don asserted either, is it, Don? No, uh -uh. no, that seems right to me. Yeah, I mean, I get it. I mean, potentially the relationship can go back and forth, but I think for now, and I don't say this with any real egoism, I think we should just be set up as the, okay, here's here's the stuff we're working on. When you y'all need this, you come in and grab it as you need it. Only perhaps <laughs> more formally stated. <laughs> I mean, I think of like the the use case of say somebody says, "I want to, I want I want to see all of the new issues open, like full stop." And you're like, "All right, fine. I'll just show you all, all the new issues opened in this repository." Like, Hold on. What? <laughs> you said Night Rider? <laughs> oh yeah, my. I it think so. It is Knight Rider. I'm stealing that ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hold on. I have to get this real quickly. I'm... Okay. Um, I, I, I wanted to ask a quick question, if I could. Um, when we when you say how do we create the connection between working groups, do we have any kind of governance model for when a working group comes up with a new metric that they want to include for 
it to be considered for inclusion in commons first? Because there's definitely a scenario where it's like the working groups come up with their own metrics and then other working groups later look at it and say, oh, well, that would be more useful in commons Then you're going to have to try and move it back to commons. Like, is there a process where... Why would they need to? Would they need to? I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, that's another question. I actually asked why, but, you know, I, I, I mean, if, if I have... I mean, as a, I'm coming at this from two hats. One is the I'm working with chaos, and then the other is I'm going to eventually be a consumer of these metrics. I'm not really going to care where the metrics coming from. For sure. You know, and it's a lot of picking and choosing and Lego block mentality, at least in my head. Um, so I, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just wondering if we have to be that formal about it. Is, is that something you have to think on? Yeah, no, I mean, I think, I think we've left it up to the individual working groups. So if, if risk has a metric that they want to pick up, um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fight them for it. We, we don't have enough resources to, <laughs> to be oh, territorial okay. about, which, <laughs> about which working group it fits in. Um, we're gonna have a duel at dawn to decide. Um, yeah, again so it's, the, again with the violence, Dawn, I, I just <laughs> coming up. <laughs> Well, I, I think there's some understanding that some of these metrics, regardless of what working group drafts them, are going to sort of be matrixed as useful for different mm -hmm. working groups as well. Like, we're yeah. Commons probably not the only working group that'll define a metric that a different working group is going to want to use. Yeah, exactly. And one of the things we've identified is there's there's just so much overlap um, between the working groups. So, yeah, we're just kind of kind of trying to. We're trying to wing it, I guess, and and then I know, we trying to like not so so much. <laughs> I, think, I think that kind of goes back to what I was trying to say earlier. The uh, the focus areas kind of belong to the working groups, but the the detail metrics kind of belong to everyone. Yeah. And the detail metrics are kind of a grab bag that can inform the metrics or inform the the focus areas in each in each working group. So yeah, I think it's possible that working groups have ownership of detail metrics. And it's certainly possible that one metric in a variety of different working group areas. That is a percent possible <coughs> to me. Um, can I, can I, I'm sorry, can I finish my one use case for Knight Rider? Jumped in yeah. <laughs> and yeah, overtook this. All right, so mine was, you get asked to you get asked to display the number of new issues, right? And so you're like, fine, just give me a. You're using a tool, and you want to see the number of new issues, the number of closed issues. Um, and so we would obviously go to evolution and take a look at how these types of metrics are defined, right? And so that's that would be a normal use case. I could see that happening, but then to me there would be a potentially a second question, which would say, can you filter these based on organizational affiliation? Or can you filter these based on geography? Like the number, the number of new issues or the number of closed issues, you know, who's closing issues. So to me then, that's where Common steps in. And Common has take, taken the time to identify organizational diversity. So in that case then, organizational diversity becomes a filter for the age of issues or for the number of new issues or for the number of closed issues. And there's no reason to, to ask evolution in that case, obviously to redefine organizational diversity, I think to Kevin's point, it's already been done. So to me then organizational diversity is a filter, a potential filter for this issue, this issue thing that I'm talking about. Yeah, but I think yeah. it's not necessarily, um, limited to common either because there are certainly you know i could think of you know a lot of cases where someone might want to filter all kinds of metrics out of all kinds of the work out of all of the different working groups on things okay. like um you know things that might come out of uh gmd yep. or evolution that we're calling it so like where where's the product in its life cycle yep. for example might be a good filter so i think it wouldn't just be the common metrics that would I be see. the I think any of the metrics coming out of any of the working groups could be filters. I see. For, for other metrics. Does that make sense? Well, I guess even looking. Yeah, that doesn't. 
even kind of the common metrics, like organizational diversity might be a common filter, geography might be a common filter, but mm -hmm. something like responsiveness metrics that may not kind of in that filter, that filter category. We haven't really talked through responsiveness metrics yet. Um, or maybe it would be. Well, so Matt, what's the pain point here? Because you just described a scenario that pretty much repeated what I envisioned that yep. would be. So where, so, the, okay. The pain point to me is how do we tell evolution that organizational diversity exists? How do we make sure that the other working group oh, are there? So you don't want them reinventing the wheel? 100% no. <laughs> totally not. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be pedantic about it. I'm no. just saying, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to focus in on where the pain is here. The pain so, is just making sure that we all know what each other's doing. Mm -hmm. Don't, okay, so... So wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be a discussion for like the all hands meeting at the first of the month? Certainly could be. I mean, I, this is a problem within a large organization and like a university or a Red Hat or something like that, yeah. where nobody knows what the other teams are doing. Yeah. We have the advantage of being small enough that, you know, we're not producing a, a ton of work here right now. It's not like a fire hose. So, I mean, we can just remind people, hey, make sure you kind of check on what the other teams are doing. And here's a handy newsletter or whatever medium we use to do that. And I think too, as, the, as we get a little bit more maturity around releases, uh -huh. I think too, that people will be able to look at the releases and see which metrics already exist and make sure that they're not not redefining things. Okay. Maybe. And and I don't really see us being hyper formal where, you know, like if we did see somebody start to reinvent something, I mean, what's to just say, sending them a, a, a polite note and saying, hey, we did this over here. Don't mm -hmm. forget. Right. We And frame it the way it should be framed, which is not territorial, but just say, we just don't want you to have to do all this work again. Yep. Doesn't the uh, doesn't their metrics repository currently keep uh, uh, an instance of all of the, uh, the detailed metrics? It does, and I'll be updating that when the the candidate release period's over. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're right. So you you could expand that to include focus areas, uh, and then the metrics repository could be the go-to for like this is what exists. Don't duplicate it. Yeah. And I, I guess I sort of uh, rely on you, Matt, to, to help us with some of that because you tend to go to all of the working group meetings. You. <laughs> um, Sean also goes to a lot of the working group meetings. So I do think that having a couple of people who tend to <coughs> attend most of the working group meetings also helps with this because yeah. um, you know, you'll notice people talking about things and be like, hey, you know, this other working group's also talking about the thing. Okay. When I think, okay, yeah, and I, I'm happy. I'm totally happy to do that. And then I think maybe perhaps the other thing too is that I'll keep my eyes open for is um, on, Don, on your point, remember when you were looking at that filter and it mm -hmm. said by groups of actors and then one of them was employer, like maybe making sure that language is consistent. Yeah, that was the other thing I was going to bring up because looking at this, um, uh, yeah, looking at this metric, I'm realizing that we use very different language depending on what working group it's coming out of. Yep. So employers, you know, sort of jumped out at me because we do call it organizational affiliation. Yep. But the other one is actor. So that is very academic language that frankly, I think a lot of people who work in business don't know what that means. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's very like network dynamic community. Actor network theory. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I don't even, it is. I don't even teach actors as a word in my software engineering class anymore. Yeah, I no, call them, it, I call honestly, them people. Honestly, I didn't. People, I didn't, yes, me too, yeah. people. <laughs> yeah, participants. Or personas. Community members. Yeah. Um, so we should think about language as well maybe um, a little bit more consistency around what do we, what do we call the people? 
Yeah. Well, do we call them participants? Do we call them community members? I, I tend to not like actors because I'll be honest, like until I started my PhD, I didn't understand what that word meant. <laughs> and then I started reading it because I was, I was in the, you know, network analysis group and I was like, sure. actors. It's the, it's the fancy word for people. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> when you get oh, egos oh. and alters, when you're doing network theory, so you get like different <laughs> kinds of actors and it gets really complicated. Um, but Nodes. Nodes, yes. <laughs> nodes and edges. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, um, so regular people don't know what that means. Um, regular actors, you mean? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I think extras, speaking roles, standby. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> where's Where's the catering? That's all I care. <laughs> all right. Well, let me um. I, I'll also put that kind of on my to-do list. I don't think that'll be resolved by the release, but well, it's probably something to think about with, maybe, I mean, and maybe these are kind of a, as a different note here, but maybe these are the things we think about on these kind of midterm releases. Mm -hmm. It's not always about rolling out new metrics. And that can definitely be part of it, but the other part is, is stitching together the language yeah. between the working groups and really focusing on making sure that's consistent. Should and it we, might be worth putting together kind of a glossary of it too. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, ahead, I was Brian. thinking about, yeah, like a style guide based yep. on what each metric working group does. Um, yep. That could be, that would be a good thing. This, the other solution I had might be a little bit more complicated, but what if, what if we highly recommend each working group go through the other working group's metric release when they're in the time for comment period and sort of look for things like that? That's a good idea. Like if nice somebody, idea. you know, if Dawn or, or one of us saw, you know, uh, employer, then we could maybe change that to, you know, organization or what, you know, whatever language that would be more standardized. Yep. But a glossary would help because that eliminates a lot of uh, questions and confusion. We can go point to that. All right, this is helpful. Thank you. Sorry, I probably derailed the common call. On you this really one. did. It's terrible, Matt. One you totally three. did. But it was actually perfect because the two people who were working on the two metrics that I wanted to talk about aren't here. Oh, so, so we're uh, stalling. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so you are totally going to get away with it this time. That's good. <laughs> so much for those meddling kids. <laughs> I like this idea of a glossary. Okay. Um, and I also I also like the idea, Brian, of perhaps asking the working groups during the comment period next time around to maybe spend a little bit of time in one of their meetings, taking a look at the release metrics in a different working group to think about language. Yeah, or just say, hey, if anybody has some time, go go look at so and so's metric and and just make comments like any other user. Yep, I like that. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. And we should be prepared for people to come in on us too. Yep. All right, got it. I took a few notes out of band, but. Um, let's talk about the, the feedback that we've gotten on the organizational diversity metric. I'll drop the issue in the, um, here, I'll just create a place for it. I can do it. Oh, there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thanks. Um, I was dropping it in the notes because oh. I don't drop things in the Zoom notes because I use separate <laughs> computers. It's well, now they got it both places. So. <laughs> um, all right. So anything else on the, the previous topic before we dive into a new one? Anything else on language or? Well, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we have had a couple of comments on the organizational uh, organizational diversity. Yep. Um, 
Is it organizational affiliation or organizational diversity? The metric is organizational diversity, but the thing that we're the thing is organizational affiliation. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so, so there's a comment from, uh, from you, Matt, about how you account for accurate curation of yeah, multiple was, email was, addresses. That was echoing a comment from Kate. Yeah. And Kate added to that, which was, and individuals changing organization over time. Um, uh, and then, uh, Armstrong, Armstrong. I was trying to say Anderson. I knew that wasn't right, and I was struggling. <laughs> Armstrong, um, you know, you can have a central account system. So OpenStack uses one. Um, so even if people change organization around multiple emails, they'll still identify it as one person. So Sorting Hat does something similar in the Grimoire Labs world. Um, so do we have somebody that's uh, – going to incorporate this into the into the released metric well um yeah i mean should we it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. well because here's my thing i mean i thought that the met and maybe i'm wrong but my impression of the metric was what are what do we have to identify at that point, how do we identify organizational affiliation mm -hmm. in my in my project at that point? Um, I don't really I don't know if I care. Like, I I didn't know. Well, okay, so do our metrics deal with this stuff over time? Um, a snapshot of where you are at that moment. But just, just to throw a use case out there, reading through this too, for instance, I have people on my development team because our, our company has changed names uh, like six times in the last three years for, for email addresses. So I have people who develop right now who have, you know, one email address associated with GitHub, a different email associated with Jarrett, and a different email associated with uh uh, some of the other cloud services we use, and, but they're all the same person. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how that, that factors into like your initial release, but that is definitely a well-identified problem. There's yeah, I mean, Brian, yeah, you, you make a good point because I think we deliberately didn't want to be prescriptive about a lot of this because it depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to look at the snapshot as like what, how diverse is my, is my community right now from an organizational right. diversity standpoint, then you don't need to care about over time. On the other hand, if you're doing a PhD, like, like what I was, and I needed to look, and I was doing kind of an event history analysis where I had, you know, two years worth of events and people changed jobs and I needed to know who their employer was on the day of the event that I was, that I was measuring. So I cared about right. that over time. So I think what I think we might want to do is just add a section. Okay. Um, that that's sort of like things to think about or caveats or something that as you're measuring organizational diversity for your um, for your project, you may want to think about these couple of things because it depends on depends on what you're trying to do. Some people may care about it. Some people may not. Um, but it is important. I think that they at least think about it. Yeah, and for the record, I think they should be thinking about it. I just don't, I didn't know what its place was in this metric. Yeah. So right now, there's no, no other metric has a heading called like caveats, you mm -hmm. know, or something like that. So. Um, Could we, we put it in known implementations? No. I was, just, I was thinking that, and then maybe for 1.5, you know, like for, something in February when we release, we could talk about adding a new heading called like caveats, but for now it could be just in known implementation. What about, what about in strategies? Um, yeah. We could, oh, yeah. because if, 
uh, you know, maybe not a bulleted list of, of caveats, but we could maybe put a statement in there that says different people measure organizational diversity differently. You may need to think about, yeah. um, you know, over time. What was the other one that was mentioned? Right, um, because actually, yeah, I think that's a good idea because actually in the known implementation we have now, we actually specifically mentioned sorting hat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which essentially does that. And maybe we can I, we can expand that sentence. We say, it's very short. We just say the Grimoire Lab sorting hat manages identities, period. If you know we, um, I'm in known implementation. Oh, I see. I see that. In that first bullet. Yep. And, and so you could expand that and say, which track can track organizational affiliation over time. And then to Don's point, we can go back in strategies and say, you know, something like, you know, think about how, you know, you know, analyze how organizational affiliation might change for individual uh, people or whether we call them over time or something. Yeah, I, I'm working on, uh, so here in the notes under feedback about release, I have kind of the start of, so I have depending on the needs of, of, well, yeah, of the project, you may want to consider how to handle multiple email addresses, changes over time, and affiliation changes over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, contractor status. <coughs> Uh, contractor versus employee. Well, I know we have all this down in the original document that um, Brian and Toby had crafted, and I have been trying to find this original Google Doc. I'm just oh, to find the issue. Okay. Oh yeah, good luck. <laughs> if it's a Google Doc that you don't still have open, it just might as well not exist. Well, yeah, <laughs> I own this doc, so I should be might be able to find it. Oh, stand by. There should be an uh, issue somewhere that we link to from. Actually, if you just search your drive for Toby, you'd probably find it. Or less work is just to use Don's sentence and not worry about tracking down the old document. <laughs> yeah, because we don't want to include everything. We just want to include yeah. a couple of representative examples. Um, yeah. I mean, I think Don's sentence kind of gets into it, although, ugh, contractor versus employee. Uh. We can just leave that off. No, it's fine. Leave it because it might, somebody might care. I found the document. Huh? What? Good job. I just posted it in the chat. Sean is, is Google Doc Guru. I use the search function on Google. It's very powerful. I've heard mm -hmm. this not. Is good. I'm I'm a, I remember the right way to spell Toby. Boom. Here's the problem with Google search though. If you've only looked at a document and edited it and someone hasn't officially you, shared it with you. Or if you hadn't, if you don't click add to your drive. Yep. Which is like, that's a good practice because if you hit click add to your drive, then the search works. But if you forget to do. Then, yep. That's, right, that's the problem I always have. Okay. Can I, I'm going to, I modified that sentence just a little bit, Don, and I'm going to yeah, get rid of it, et cetera. Okay. She might hurt you. Hmm. Oh, I just, I just said these are examples. We want to consider such issues as. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. I don't like et cetera at the end either. But that I don't either. I always up the fastest. Georg and Kevin know that I add goats. If you leave, if you leave the reader <laughs> add whatever they want, then I always add goats. <laughs> <laughs> For et cetera. <laughs> no, you can too. Okay. <laughs> well, you're giving the reader way too much latitude to add whatever they want at that point. It's true. It's true. Definitely going to use that to mess with my team. <laughs> and goats? Is that what you want me to add? <laughs> okay, so here, it's actually, it's actually later in the doc, there's uh, the affiliation data model section which talks about how to handle changes over time, how to handle ambiguity, so pair programming, multiple affiliations, contractors, subsidiaries, contributor preference. Where are you uh, looking at right them? Uh, sorry, it's on the, the document with me and Toby. 
Yeah, oh, page yeah. page four and four and five. It's the last one that Sean linked in the I'm sorry. chat. <coughs> um, I might change contractor versus employee to uh, affiliation ambiguity. Oh, yeah, but then nobody will know what you're talking about. <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm not being. No, nope, no, nope, really you're absolutely. You are absolutely right. Um, yeah. Yeah, it sounds fine to me as someone who spends loads of time thinking about this. But you're right; people aren't going to know what that means. Yeah. And I mean, the in the case of identifying individuals and their affiliations, there's. I mean, there. Are, we do some things in Augur to find emails and affiliations, and I think Sorting Hat tries to do some things similarly, but ultimately it's a curation process. And like there's no canonical place right now where we can identify open source developers' affiliations. Okay, so I'm going to leave this in the issue. Uh, just so that we have it in one place. And the suggestion is just to add a bullet point that says that, correct? Yep, yeah. exactly. Okay. Which is why I just put the issue in the strategy section. Let's add the following bullet and then basically okay. what we just wrote. Okay. I can take the action item off actually adding this item. Thanks, Gary. Do we merge these now or after the end of the comment period? We just do it now. Okay. I think we, we had mentioned making a, uh, a note in the issue that it was resolved though. So the, the conversation doesn't continue. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. And I would maybe, um, maybe leave uh, a link to the pull request where you made the change so that people can see the diff. Okay. Well, that seems simple. Yep. Oh. Is there anything else that we want to, is there anything else we want to talk about today? Um, not particularly for common, but while we're on here, I'd like to just put in a plug for the work that John has done on the constituent model that he shared out to the list. So. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I haven't looked at that. I poked at your social media model. It's just a, <laughs> you know, it's a, just, yeah, a way just to think about how um, the users that we have of the metrics potentially and how these might start mapping together. So. Cool. Was that, sorry, did that go out to the list? Says the person who's way behind on her email. Yes. Okay. I, I have a, I have a 10 hour flight tomorrow. So that's when I'm catching up on email. And there's also John, didn't you also put, was the social media thing on there too? Yeah. Yep. Just, just jumping off places. And, and full disclosure, I'm obviously not a, a developer or a, a researcher, I'm just coming at it kind of from the business and product standpoint. This is awesome. Thank you. Probably more useful. <laughs> As we learned that we usually make, make things better. <laughs> okay, quick update. We do have the pull request in place. Thanks. Well, that was fast. <laughs> <coughs> cool all right well if we don't uh, unless anybody, does anybody else have anything else you need to sign it off Gary the DCO sign off no nothing else uh, I'm not <laughs> the only one that forgets that yay oh my <laughs> god I have to rebase all of my commits <laughs> to the chaos repositories because the first time it's like oh you didn't pass the dco and i'm like
Yeah, I just got a new laptop last night in the mail, so I haven't set up all the add-ons and everything yet. Yeah, Thanks. because I'm in this chicken egg thing where I can't I can't just alias it to automatically add a sign off by because in the Kubernetes community you're not allowed to have at signs in commits because it triggers it triggers other things and they have all this automation around it. So you can't I can't just do all of them with a signed off by. That's interesting. <laughs> Yeah. Well, at signs can automatically like um, uh, basically it, it automatic it yeah it adds them as reviewers. Okay. It, if it's an email or if it's a uh, what do you call it like a GitHub username, but uh -huh. the bot's not smart enough to see that it's the in the middle of an email address, so then it tries to do something with it and gets confused and <laughs> anyways, so. All right. Cool. Cool. Safe travels to people heading out to Portland. Thanks. All right. And enjoy, the, enjy your time. Yeah, we'll do. I'm just going to eat and drink my way through Portland because I have loads of favorite restaurants there. That's my plan. <laughs> I'll follow you again, Don, because that's a good strategy at any conference. Ah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Little Big when... Burger right up the street. So... <laughs> I'm be vegan, so I have some special. Oh, okay. Okay. But uh, yeah, when do you, sorry, I went derailing the meeting. Uh, we can probably turn off the recording. I think we're pretty much done. Um, when are you flying in, Garrick?